while back, I worked for a couple in an L.A. suburb. They were about 40. The woman was a hard-charging executive of some kind, and the man was a stay-at-home dad. Every morning I'd arrive as she was just leaving. She'd be barking last-minute instructions to her husband, and he'd be in pajama bottoms and a sweatshirt with the baby on his hip. As I worked, I could hear the TV all morning, and around noon, Daddy would appear again with baby in a stroller and head for her playdate in the local park. I worked till dark every evening and never once saw that woman come home. Undoubtedly, she was in traffic somewhere while her husband cooked dinner and baby watched videos from the playpen. Trust me, this is not a rare scenario. All over the Western world, women are slugging it out in boardrooms while their defanged hubbies watch The Little Mermaid and try to remember what it felt like to be a guy. We do logic here, so let's do some logic. How do you think she sees him? We've heard about how men feel intimidated and emasculated by powerful women. Well, what do these women feel about the men that their own power has done that to? What do you think? You think that after spending the day wrestling an account away from a competitor in some capitalist cage match, she wants to sleep with a man whose big triumph of the day was getting little Emma a good seat on the swings? House painting is not the most manly of the trades, but I think that sometimes having me around for a week or two sends these stay-at-home dads into a sort of depression. What could be worse for a guy than seeing another guy do the stuff his wife wants done while he pushes a stroller and changes diapers? I mean, that's got to kind of suck. As we said in part two, feminism is really just a perverse celebration of masculinity. And what it has done to the men and women caught up in it is to suppress actual masculinity in males while forcing women into an ongoing imitation of masculinity. Of course, there are lots of different scenarios. Many households now contain two mid-level execs, neither of which is very happy, or a man with some real earning power and a woman who's only working because she thinks she has to. There are lots of variations, but what I almost never see, at least in California, is a home where dad is the warrior leaving each day to slay the metaphorical antelope while mom does what a mommy does best, the educator, the nurturer, the homemaker. And all of this because some female academics back in the 60s were bored with the idea of motherhood. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and then click the little bell to get notifications.